Hi guys, it's uh, Britain Lots here. Thanks very, very much for tuning in tonight. Apologies for not making a video in a while. I've just had a lot on, not been very well. I went away and just had loads of work on, lots to do, family as well. But I am back, and yeah, so this is another rugby video from the Armchair Pundit, and we're going to talk about the Lions tonight. So the Westman Nationals are now well and truly over with England winning 37-21 pretty comprehensive win apart from maybe the first 20 odd minutes but England came away with a win they look very very good for it some players coming into form very nice it'll make a very interesting Six Nations I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to making a Six Nations predictor video closer to the time based on injuries and that kind of thing we'll see if Dylan Hartley will be around then as well after just sending off in I think six minutes in a European game uh, that's a bit stupid but but yeah that's just Dylan Hartley I suppose um, anyway today we are going to talk about my starting 15 for the first Lions test what I think it should be some of them are based some of the selections are based on how the players perform the Aussie internationals some of the guys didn't play any Aussie internationals mainly because of injury but let's see how we go guys please in the comments see if you agree with me disagree with me who do you swap in who do you put out all that kind of stuff so guys so starting off in the front row we've got Mako Vinopola at number one he's improved beyond measure this guy in the last 12 to 18 months his hands he's always had good hands his work rate's gone up his defense has gone up he's just generally just improved become a real cornerstone of, an, of a very successful Eng England team he's done very very well in a hooker I've got Rory Best I think in Northern Hemisphere at the moment haven't necessarily got the greatest depth in world-class hookers. Rory Best is probably up there. And the reason I've chosen him is because he's just led Ireland from the front every single game. Not to say Dylan Hartley hasn't led. I think that New Zealand might get to, to, to Dylan a little bit. Um, even though he's been very, very good for England, I can't really look past Rory Best, to be honest. Um, he's been just better in the set pieces. line up throwing has been better. He's just... He's just been a bit, bit better around the park. I would also probably put in Rory Best as my captain as well. Just an inspirational guy. Uh, yeah, so Rory Best in the captain. Um, the other prop is Furlong. I can't even pronounce his first name. I'm not even going to try. Irish prop is a beast. Very, very hard guy to stop. Playing very well for Ireland. He um, tackles hard, hits every single rock and hits hard as well. So very, very good player. Second rows, um, I've gone for Richie Gray from Scotland. Uh, good player, big player, tall, good, good line option, very good at around the park. He's excellent. He's got a very, very good younger brother as well. It was a bit of a coin toss between him and his brother because they're both very good players. And then the other second row, I've gone for Alan Wynne Jones. He is just, he's an absolute machine, this guy. And if Rich Rory Best and Captain be Alan Wynne Jones because he just drives people, he just really drives them on. Very good player, absolutely solid. He doesn't miss a tackle, gets around the park. Very, very good. I haven't chosen any English second rows because Courtney Laws, is, he's playing very well at the moment, but he's a little bit hot and cold. Joe Launchby will be in the, they'll be in the squad. Joe Launchby will be in the squad. Cruz will probably be in the squad. So yeah, they're just the guys I think have just got a little bit more X factor than the English second rows at the moment. Even though England's probably got the best sort of depth, I think. I think those two have got the sort of X factor and real leadership in the um, in the team. Okay, blindside flanker. I've gone for a little bit of an outside choice on this one. I think this is where this guy's future is going to be at blindside rather than second row. I've gone for Toje of England. The guy is making so many tackles, so many turnovers and carries well. And that's from the second row. You can imagine what this guy can do with the six on his back. He'd be unreal. Even he can probably play eight as well. I wouldn't pass him at eight. And if England continue this sort of six and a half playing at seven, James Haskell, Tom Wood, he's going to be the best of the lot. He's this guy could be unstoppable. I wouldn't be surprised to see him with a six, seven, or eight on on his back, particularly for England. Um, and yeah, I I'd pick him at blindside flanker for my Lions team. I would um, seven. I've got Tipperick from Wales. The guy is just a tackling machine. Um, I've gone for him over Warburton. Warburton's been injured a lot this year, um, so Tipperick gets gets her nod. England don't have any sevens really. I think although Haskell's played well. He'd get exposed against New, New Zealand um, just because of his maybe his lack of pace to the breakdown. He, he hits hard and he carries hard, but he'd get undone on the breakdown. That's why I don't think he's. Yeah, so I wouldn't pick him in my Lions team. Um, and number eight, Billy Vinopola. 
I'm starting to think of a better number in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. The guy's playing extremely well. And I think that's a lot down to Eddie Jones as well. Believe it, but he's, sort of, he's getting through his 18 minutes a lot more and he's, you know, he's playing very, very well. Into the back scrum half. I had a bit of a debate in my mind about this because although Conor Murray is playing a lot better than Ben Youngs, Ben Youngs not playing badly, but Conor Murray is playing very well. I wanted to choose Ben Youngs because I've got an English 8 and an English 10. So therefore, do I want an English 9 as well? He plays with them, possibly. I can't, but I can't not pick Conor Murray. The guy is just playing incredibly well. Maybe even the best nine in the world at the moment. He's playing so, so well. He picked New Zealand apart in Chicago. He really did. His range of passing is good. He's really quick around the around the park. He gets the ball out quick. He's got a good kicking game, but then so is Ben Youngs. But Conor Murray for me. Um, in at fly half, I've got Owen Farrell. He's just solid. He's solid. He's not the most creative player. If I'm a creative player, probably you might look at me. It'd be George Ford instead. Down bigger to a degree, but... Owen Farrell's not going to miss many kicks and they're vital in Lions in the Lions series the penalties and those conversions are, are vital he's got a very cool head on his shoulders he went through a patch of again a bit, a bit testy but he's got a very cool head on, on, on his shoulders I think he'll lead the team around well make good decisions let's go left wing uh, I've got Anthony Watson he's got the X factor on the wing um, I chose him over say George North I don't know where George North is really going to stand injury wise he's been knocked out again some people say it could signal the end of his career, maybe. It's a real shame because he's an excellent player. I really love watching George North play. But I think Anthony Watson's just got that X factor, his speed and his agility. So that's what I've gone for him. Inside centre, Robbie Henshaw. Again, one of the standout players against New Zealand for Ireland. In fact, the whole series has played very, very well. Robbie Henshaw, and um, he's just he doesn't do anything wrong. Does the basics very, very well. Big and strong. Um, outside him, I've got Jonathan Joseph. I think he'll partner Robbie Henshaw well if he runs the right lines off him. If they learn to play with each other quickly, it could be devastating together. Jonathan Joseph, he had a bit, he's very pretty quiet, say 12 months for England, but he turned it on towards the back end of this series. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see him crack on, hopefully. We'll have to wait and see. Right wing, I've got Liam Williams from Wales. He's just fast, he's really quick, he can slot into fullback as well. And, He's um he's been one of Wilder's bright sparks definitely in in this series um in a team that's not necessarily performed that well he's been one of the standout players he's just he's good he's a good good player and I think his speed along with Andy Watson on the wings will cause New Zealand some some trouble okay last but not least fullback Stuart Hogg he is just slippery you know you can't get to him he's a little bit like Ben Smith for New Zealand when he plays fullback one of the guys that will, that will take every high ball and he's very hard to stop one on one his agility is so, so good and he's been a good link up player um, he's solid in defence he can't say much much more than that that's my starting 15 guys now, if you've got any comments if you like the video give it a like if you don't like it Give it a thumbs down and subscribe for more and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.